In my personal opinion, Buffalo is one of the most underrated characters in the entirety of One Piece. I mean, what is not to like? Unique character design, cool devil fruit ability, and just look at that gorgeous, gorgeous smile, encouraging people to subscribe to the Grand Line Review for regular One Piece content uploaded straight into their YouTube feed. Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece, and today for the Devil Fruit Encyclopedia, we have another super fun fruit that takes us high, high into the sky with the Guru Guru no Mi. The Guru Guru no Mi is a Paramecia type fruit that allows its user to turn various parts of their body into propeller-like structures, which allegedly turns them into what is known as a rotation human. A very odd and kind of specific fruit here, which was consumed by Buffalo, an officer of the Don Quixote Pirates, and it was first showcased during the tail end of the Punk Hazard arc. This fruit takes its name, as many often do, from a Japanese onomatopoeia, of course being Guru Guru, which is meant to signify the sound of turning in circles, which is tricky to kind of wrap your head around, but I like to think of it as a sort of propeller sound. You know, something like goody 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 goody. Or failing that, I also like to think of the classic Dead or Alive song, having Buffalo spin right round baby, right round like a record baby, right round round round. Although in retrospect, that doesn't help the onomatopoeia comprehension at all. But it is potentially relevant. No, not really. But in any case, the English translation of this happens to be the spin spin fruit for both the Viz manga and Funimation sub incarnations. So this is a very cool fruit for me personally, for one primarily nostalgic reason, and I'll ask you to cast your minds back briefly into the realm of Sonic, specifically to look at the character of Tails. Now, as a child, I was always much more interested in Tails because I very much preferred the idea of flight to that of being able to run like really fast. But even as a youngling, how Tails achieved this never quite made sense to me because his tails should get tangled immediately and thus ruin everything. And again, this did come from a series where a hedgehog could break the sound barrier. So maybe too many questions isn't necessarily a good thing, but cut to December 2012, which was Buffalo's first appearance in the manga. And after all of this time, it would appear that Oda has come up with his own tails, except this incarnation involves a magical fruit. So of course it makes perfect sense. And as a result of one being able to turn their body into various propellers, the most obvious benefit of the Guru Guru no Mi is that it grants the user the power of flight, which, and I must say this each and every single time, is one of the greatest natural benefits that one could possibly have in the One Piece world, given that it is heavily water-based, much more so than even our own. And those seas are extremely tough to travel, especially those of the Grand Line and the New World. However, with the ability to fly, there is much less to worry about. It is ridiculously powerful, so much so that Oda went to the trouble of having Pell state during the Alabaster arc that there are only five flying type devil fruits known to exist. Now, obviously his Tori Tori no Mi model Falcon was one of them, as is assumedly Buffalo's Guru Guru no Mi. In addition to that, we also have Golden Lion Chiki's Fua Fua no Mi, because yes, he is canon. Marco's Tori Tori no Mi model Phoenix, Kaido's potential dragon devil fruit, King's devil fruit, Lafitte's potential devil fruit, the two bug zones, both of which can fly, and almost every Logia in existence. So there you have it all five of the flying devil fruits, which is one of my personal favorite classic statements of One Piece that I suspect Oda very, very much regrets putting into an early portion of the story, and I highly doubt that it will ever be addressed. And yeah, there is an explanation like, well, only five were ever recorded in the encyclopedia in the world, but Oda doesn't really do stuff like that. Exposition like this is intended to be delivered straight to the audience rather than a character. In any case, I've gotten way off track here as I often do, but the benefits of the Guru Guru no Mi do go beyond that of flight because propellers are actually quite powerful objects in their own right, even if they are constructed from human materials. The human material in this case being a buffalo. And we saw this in the fruit's initial appearance when Buffalo created an incredibly powerful windstorm, which he appears to have achieved by activating his entire body in propeller form, which is important because it goes to show that this fruit has varying levels of strength depending on how much of your body is used. And as much as Buffalo doesn't display this himself in the series, there is also a pretty fantastic combative advantage that becomes available by being able to generate the force of a propeller. So for for example, let's say that you turn your arm into a rotating construct and strike an opponent with it, then that is going to be pretty immediately far more potent and destructive than any force that the user could have naturally generated. So I think that there is a temptation to think of the Guru Guru no Mi as a strictly utility-based fruit, which no matter whose hands it ends up in, is most certainly going to be used primarily for transport and travel, but it does carry some innate appeal for brawlers and fighters in general, because even if you do not elect to take advantage of the propeller style force, you can still use basic flight in vault with this fruit to achieve superior maneuverability on any given battlefield. Now with all of this in mind, let's begin to examine how Buffalo himself makes use of the Guru Guru no Mi, and it's a bit of a mixed bag, really. In many ways, Buffalo is perfectly suited to this particular power, primarily due to his raw physicality. Buffalo is a much, much bigger character than I think many of us remember. In fact, he stands at an absurd height of 696 centimeters tall, which for our American chums is just over 22 feet. 
feet. And just to put that into some degree of perspective, Charlotte Carter Curry, a freakishly giant man in his own right, was only 509 centimeters tall, so Buffalo towers over Carter Curry. But the main reason why this is a great match for the Guru Guru no Mi is because the bigger Buffalo is, the more effective of an aircraft he becomes. His limbs are naturally bigger, which means that his propellers will be stronger and faster than those of your average sized human. Plus, in the correct configuration, he also has a lot more space on his body for transportation purposes, whether that be cargo or people. So Buffalo is great in that respect. And just for example, imagine that Buffalo and Baby 5 consumed their other fruits instead. Baby 5 would be a significantly less potent user of this fruit because it would be nigh on impossible to actually transport anything on her. Now, sadly, Buffalo's combat abilities are lacking to learn uh, to say the least. Although in at least one instance, we did get to see him gauging on Dressrosa in which he made use of his fruit to charge a Kuros with great speed. Although he did go on to be completely annihilated by a one-legged swordsman in an incredibly brutal confrontation actually, where it looks an awful lot like Kuros just snaps his neck. But Buffalo did survive this and he was arrested with the rest of the Don Quixote family. But here's another thing about Mr. Buffalo. He isn't exactly, you know, the smartest of minions. And so quite possibly the greatest use of the Guru Guru no Mi in the series comes directly from Doflamingo himself, who made supreme strategic use of the ability by ordering and directing Buffalo to provide the best possible benefit to his personal cause. So for example, in Law's flashback on Minion Island, Buffalo's task was to be a scout flying around the birdcage to spot Rosinante or intercept marine communications. Now this would not turn out to be how Doflamingo caught Rosinante, and in fact, as much as I've just stated how much of a benefit Buffalo's powers were, they led to intercepting a marine conversation, which stated that they had sheltered someone, which would be a young Diaz Drake. However, Doflamingo took this as a confirmation that Trafalgar Law had not been caught in the birdcage, and thus in a really strange roundabout way, Buffalo's abilities directly led to saving Law's life. However, I do also need to point out that Buffalo rarely works as a one-man operation, and he is often paired with Baby Five, which seems to be a very favorable combination for the two of them, as they effectively become something of a fighter jet. Buffalo takes care of all of the transport, and Baby Five, with her absurdly powerful weapon-based fruit, fires any number of projectiles at any number of given enemies. Plus, the two of them even have a super special combo attack, Guru Guru Toshaho, which has Baby Five turn into a missile, at which point Buffalo assumes responsibility for firing her by rapidly spinning his arms around and launching missile Baby Five with the momentum of a real missile, which yes, is a pretty roundabout way of doing things. And it also takes your one source of potent attack out of conflict for a bit. But compared to what the general One Piece world can muster, this is actually an exquisitely devastating attack. Now for the standard awakening discussion, I would assume that the Guru Guru no Mi falls into some fairly established territory here. And I would imagine that if Buffalo somehow, and I emphasize somehow because I don't believe in him, but if he somehow awakened the devil fruit, then it would probably allow him to transform the environment around him into propeller-like structures, which is pretty intriguing because that is certainly not the type of battlefield that, you know, I'd be keen to step on out of fear of being hit by like a tree spinning rapidly, but also because it would allow its user to very effectively control wind and put a ton of resistance onto an opponent. So yeah, in the right hands, it could lead to complete domination of maneuverability with you yourself being able to fly as well as greatly restricting movement of your enemy. And I'm assuming that if the Guru Guru no Mi ever found its way into an awakened state, then it would certainly have to be in the right hands. But these, these are not the right hands. Some other miscellaneous things to consider when becoming a rotation human. Super interestingly, this fruit is actually very, very similar to one that we have already examined in the encyclopedia, being the Shari Shari no Mi. The effect is basically the same, holding its basis in rotation, except that the Shari Shari no Mi allows its user to transform their body into wheels, and thus give its user the utility to travel as a vehicle on land, which the Guru Guru no Mi would be unable to do. However, you could essentially think of the Guru Guru no Mi as the sky version of the Shari Shari no Mi and vice versa, because there is very little other tangible difference between them. And one fun utility that almost immediately springs to my mind is that because I despise the Australian summer with a burning passion, this fruit would give you the power to turn your body into a powerful yet portable fan. Although admittedly that could get quite tiresome if this devil fruit requires a conscious effort to maintain its ability, which I think we have to assume it does because I don't think Buffalo could just say, okay, propel arms, activate, and then leave them like that until he wants to turn them off. No, I think it does need to be conscious. But to conclude, the Guru Guru no Mi is quite simply a great ability. It doesn't contain the raw power of other devil fruits, but it does something much more important, which is to provide exceptional benefit to the daily life of anyone who was to consume it. There is not one person in this world who could argue with the idea of flight. It's always going to be a benefit. And in addition to that, if you were so inclined to use it for combat, then it could give you a lot of extended usage there as well. There is nothing wrong with the Guru Guru no Mi. It certainly doesn't have any flaws. In fact, the very basic concept of flight even negates the primary downside of devil fruits, which is losing the ability to swim. So I guess you just need to ask yourself
yourself this. What do you value more? The ability to swim or the ability to fly? That is more or less your choice here. You can continue to swim and be naturally incapable of flight, or you could choose to fly and become naturally incapable of swimming. And personally, I'm probably almost always going to choose flight when posed this question. I mean, it depends on the specific fruit, but in this case, yeah, why not? Serve me up that Gudu Gudu no Mi on a silver platter. And with that, we are going to commit the Gudu Gudu no Mi to the Devil Fruit Encyclopedia. Next time on the Devil Fruit Encyclopedia, we are still making our way through the Don Quixote Pirates, as we will be for quite some time. And next up, we are heading straight to an executive officer who is consistently in need of a tissue so that we can examine Treble's better, better, no me. But what do you guys think? Please do leave your thoughts in the comments below or even join my Discord server. And if you're keen to see more videos like this, then please do go and check out some of my other content or even subscribe to the channel for more glorious One Piece business uploaded straight into your YouTube feeds. But for now, this has been the Grand Line Review and I'll see you next time.